In this video I'm going to discuss chapter 12 of this book. Here are the subjects. I'm going to have a look at plane strain and then check the results of plane strain in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So here I've got an image of a plane strain situation. Uh, plane strain means that the, the part is relatively wide and there is a small strain in the y direction and larger amounts of strains in z and x direction. So in SOLIDWORKS I can create a simil uh, similar situation to this. I'll just create a new part with a simulation template. In uh, chapter 1 I've shown how to set up this template and it's convenient to use because of the easily set up unit system and also the coordinate system. So I'll just draw a part. It doesn't really need to have a certain kind of dimension to create a situation of plane strain. I can demonstrate it with any random dimension part, so like this for example. And then I'll create a sketch on this surface and create a split line with it. So here. I'll create a split line on this surface with this sketch and this surface as well. So now I'm going to create a compressive uh, stress on this surface area. So I'm going to delete this study that's already present and create a new one. Like that. And then I'll fix the geometry on this side and then create a load in the form of a pressure over here of 100 newton per square millimeter and I'll do that on the other side as well so now they're in balance so I won't get any stress concentrations over here because these forces are in balance and will hardly have any effect on the fixture on this side so the material has been taken over from SOLIDWORKS already I can then save the part and then run the study and this will be quite close to a plane strain situation uh, you see the SOLIDWORKS has exaggerated the deformation 7000 times here I can just switch that off because it looks a bit weird so I'll take true scale and then you will hardly see any deformation so now I'm gonna create a, a strain plot in the X direction let me see uh, X direction like that and then I can just copy this plot so copy and paste and then copy it again can be uh, a bit easier to copy and paste instead of defining a new plot every time so then I'll change this one to be the stress in the oh sorry the strain in the y direction this one and this one should be the strain in the z direction so I can easily compare them like that and in this situation I'm expecting because it's a plane strain situation that the x stra strain will be smaller than the y and z strain so the the x strain you see it in the middle of the part it's closer to a plane strain situation than on the side here you've got a strain of 1 and here roughly of 4 e minus 5 so here 1 e minus 4 and here half of that so the strain in y and z direction should be a lot larger uh, relative to this strain so this uh, is maximum 1 e minus 4 now I'm gonna have a look at y strain and it's a uh, almost three times as large as the largest strain in the x-direction in this area in over here it's still bigger than the largest strain in x-direction which will also be valid in the z-direction which has a, a, a negative strain which is to be expected because the three strains when added up should be zero and this one is also in magnitude quite a lot bigger than the strain in x direction you can see it over here with this values 5 e minus 4 strains always have uh, small numbers small resulting uh, numbers and the wider this plane uh, the wider this plane gets the more it will correspond to a plane strain situation so the, the strain in the x direction should be relatively small and the wider this part gets 
the more closely this situation will uh, be present uh, uh, will represent a situation of plane strain so that was a discussion on chapter 12 thanks for watching